When it comes to One Piece, Augie D Clown has to be one of the funniest and most underrated characters. He's a total clown basically 99% of the time, but Oda's setting him up to be a formidable figure in the final saga of One Piece. If you've ever watched shows like Naruto, you'd know the sinister yet silly role that Toby played, and I believe Buggy will be the exact same thing. Today you're gonna learn why Buggy of all people is connected to the monster known as Roxy Zebek. But before we jump into that, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more theories like this. Now this is an agenda I've been pushing for a very very long time and I've gotten a lot of help from creators such as Joe Three Skull Theories. Make sure to follow him on Twitter, he drops bangers all the time and he helps me come to new conclusions and it's kind of vice versa. We're a mastermind kind of duo so shout out to him. So one of the most important things when it comes to Buggy is he has this immaculate amazing power that both him and Luffy share. During Marineford we have a scene where Mihawk talks about how Luffy has this crazy power that allows him to recruit anybody, just build allies anywhere he goes but funnily enough Buggy's the same exact way. Back in Orange Town, we see that he has ride or die crew members. Then in Impel Down, he has all these prisoners following him. To me, it's very clear that Buggy has this amazing power to just gather people, just to recruit allies. And it would make sense that Joy Boy, or like the will inheritor of Roger, known as Luffy, would have this power. And then what's potentially the son of Roxy Zebek, Buggy, would share the same exact power too. So it seems like Oda's giving a slight connection between both Luffy and Buggy. So I think it's important that we take a look at arcs where they're in included. So during the Logetown incident, we actually have Buggy attempting to kill Luffy. Now whether the lightning strike was Dragon himself or possibly Fate, it doesn't really matter. Buggy almost killed Luffy. And to me, I believe that this is symbolism towards Rocks D Buggy trying to kill Monkey D Luffy. As we said, Luffy's the will inheritor of Roger, so it would make a lot of sense for Buggy to have like this inherent hatred, this inherent rivalry towards Luffy. And seeing how during the Logetown incident, they kept talking about gods over and over and over, pushes me in the direction that the Logetown incident incident is supposed to be some kind of parallel to the God Valley incident. And then when you have moments where Smoker doesn't want any pirates to escape and get away, to me it's also symbolism to how Garp let a pirate known as Roger get away. So now when you look back at the Logetown incident through the lens of like Roxy Buggy or through the lens of a parallel to God Valley incident, it starts to make a lot more sense. Now to the topic of Buggy's goals, his dreams, ideals, I do find it very peculiar how during the Marine Ford War, Buggy goes out of his way to say he wants to become king of the world. Now, I know a lot of people like to point fingers and say that Blackbeard wants to become king of the world as well, but that was never canonically stated. Sure, if you want to speculate that, go ahead, but a lot of people seem to treat it as canon, which never in the entire story did Blackbeard actually say so. The closest thing to it is he said he wanted to be Pirate King during his fight with Ace, but Pirate King and King of the World is not the same thing. Another character that did say they want to be king of the world is actually Starry, and that's because he saw the empty throne, he was told how it symbolizes democracy, there's no true one king, clearly it's a lie, Emu sits on the empty throne, Emu's the king of the world, but again, the only reason that Steri said this is because he saw the empty throne. Whereas Buggy himself didn't have to see the empty throne, it's almost like he inherently wanted to become king of the world. Now, it's not only Buggy himself that shares the same ideals, personality, same kind of goals as Zebek, but it's also Buggy's crew. It seems like to me, Oda's portrayed Buggy's crew as a kind of reference to the Rocks Pirates themselves. You have Beast Tamer Moji, who's a parallel to King of the Beast Kaido, you have Pet Lion Richie, which is a parallel to Golden Lion Shiki, and you even have have Iron Mace Alvita who's a parallel to Big Mom. Now those are the main ones where it's kind of obvious that they're references to the Rocks Pirates, but my point is is when you take a close look at each one of the Buggy Pirates and see how it's clearly intentional that they have a Rocks Pirate counterpart, this is further emphasizing the case of Rocks D Buggy. Now that you're seeing how this is beginning to form, we also got to point out another incident that Oda went out of his way to portray. Early in the story we have Rocks D Buggy actually talking to Gold D Ace about where Luffy is. Luffy again is the will inheritor of Rock so I find it funny how the son of Zebek and the son of Roger are looking for Luffy. This is symbolism. This is definitely within Oda's writing parameters. This is within his style to try to portray to the readers. And given the case that Roxy Buggy does become a thing and we know for sure that Ace is the son of Roger, we're going to look back to that event in retrospect and just be amazed and say Goda. Now another important thing when it comes to Buggy is actually Captain John's treasure. Buggy's been obsessed over this for a very long time and it leads us to wonder like why Captain John? Why his treasure? How did Buggy find out about this. Well, coincidentally, Captain John was a member of the Rocks Pirates. Again, I believe that this is Oda's way of tying Buggy to the Rocks Pirates and Buggy to Zebek, and we're going to come to figure out why very soon. And funny enough, during the pre-time skip of One Piece, it's actually Buggy going to a Skull Island thinking that Captain John's treasure's there, which clearly it wasn't. He didn't find the treasure and he ended up getting arrested and thrown into Impel Down because of that, but I would be led to believe the correct Skull Island that Buggy was looking for was Hachinosu Island. 
Island, which again coincidentally was the same exact island that the Rocks Pirates were formed on. And the icing on the cake, it's the home of Blackbeard. Over and over and over again, it seems like Oda's trying to tie Buggy to Zebek one way or another. And then we have someone like Blackbeard, which I would be led to believe would be the will inheritor of Zebek. I find it funny how he stationed himself at the home of the Rocks Pirates. Meanwhile, the sun is at other Skull Islands looking for this treasure. Now I get it. A lot of people think that Blackbeard is tied to Zebek, in which, yeah, I agree. But not in the sense that Blackbeard is the son of Zebek. I just think that Buggy is the son of Zebek and Blackbeard would be the will inheritor. Look at it from a narrative standpoint. Look at it from an artistic standpoint. You have Luffy, the will inheritor of Roger, being the antithesis to Blackbeard, the will inheritor of Zebek. Then you have Buggy, the blood relative to Zebek, being the counterpart to Ace, the blood relative of Roger. So now you see the difference. Buggy is a son, whereas Blackbeard is the will inheritor, which ties in beautifully when you consider how Buggy and Blackbeard are the only two characters to be a part of two of the three great powers. Again, this is intentional. Oda is doing this on purpose. Having Buggy be both a warlord and a Yonko as the son of Zebek, and then having Blackbeard being both a warlord and a Yonko as the will inheritor of Zebek. It's purely intentional. Now to further explain the case of Roxy Buggy, we actually have to talk a little bit about Shanks. So earlier in the story, Shanks does manage to meet with the Gorose and he has a conversation with them about a certain pirate. Given that he's a pirate, a Yonko, and someone with a fat ass bounty, it makes a lot of sense to me that he has some kind of relationship. There's something inherent about Shanks that allows him to enter the room of authority and speak to them. Then you have moments during Marine Ford War where Sengoku takes responsibility, telling Shanks only because it's you. To me, I'm led to believe it's not necessarily something in between Shanks and the world government, but it's more so something to do with Shanks himself. And I'm leaning towards Shanks having celestial blood in him. Now, I'm not saying that Shanks is evil and he's a traitor and he's going to backstab Luffy. The point is, is that he has celestial blood in himself, but has his own motives. Now, some of the points I'm about to make might sound familiar to you, and that's because all across my channel for months and months and months now, I've been talking about how Shanks could be found at God Valley and Buggy could be found at God Valley. It would make a lot of sense for Roger, of all people, to go to God Valley and adopt two children. If I'm not mistaken, earlier in the story, at one point, they mentioned how they used to have babies on board. I believe those two babies were Buggy and Shanks, and it seems to knock a lot of things out at once. It's two birds, one stone if they got both Shanks and Buggy at the God Valley incident. And seeing how Shanks has this amazing privilege and he probably has celestial blood in him, it makes a lot of sense that the celestial dragons who were on God Valley were being attacked. And the only way they can make sure that Shanks survives and he actually finds a home is by hiding him, doing something with him. But again, Roger wouldn't mind adopting the celestial dragon baby because he doesn't believe that sons should inherit the sins of their father. This theme has been thrown on our face over and over and over again. For an example, how Roger told Garp to adopt Ace because Ace shouldn't inherit the sins of his father, Roger. So again, seeing how it's likely that both Shanks and Buggy were found at God Valley, and then Shanks has celestial blood in him, and that Buggy's potentially the son of Zebek, that would explain their never-ending rivalry. Like Shanks and Buggy growing up, they fought and argued over literally everything. It could be the North Pole and South Pole, which one's colder. It could be who ends up getting more food, who gets a devil fruit, literally everything. Anything that they could possibly argue about and have be rivals about, that's what they were doing. And I don't think it was something shallow like Zoro and Sanji. No, this is something intentional that Oda's trying to draw, Oda's trying to symbolize to us. And given everything I've explained to you in this video so far, to me, it makes a lot of sense for Shanks to be a rival because he has celestial blood in him and Buggy to be a rival because he has Rock's blood in him. And again, this makes a lot of sense for Shanks given his name. A Shank and an anchor is what keeps the balance, it's what keeps it stable. All throughout the story, Shanks is a balance keeper. He's keeping the world at balance, he's keeping the world safe and stopping the extinguish of lights, stopping the wars. It is Shanks keeping the balance. So to have Buggy be the antithesis to Shanks, where everywhere Buggy goes, whether it's Orange Town, Impel Down, Marine Ford War, everywhere Buggy goes, he's just causing mayhem. To me, it seems like Shanks would definitely have celestial blood in him, whereas Buggy would have D blood in him. And what further supports this is during Just Rosa, Law goes out of his way to tell Doflamingo that D will surely brew up a storm. Now, the obvious conclusion is that it was meant for both Law and Luffy, but I think that this is Oda talking through the characters and he's trying to imply there will be other D members throughout the story that are brewing up storms. And again, Buggy's been brewing up a storm over and over and over again. And personally, I do think we will have a conclusion where Buggy is proven to be not only the son of rocks, but a D clan member. In chapter 801, Doflamingo asks when more of the D clan members will show themselves. Again, this is Oda talking through the characters. He's trying to imply that there are members in the story. There are characters in One Piece that have not yet revealed they are members of the D clan. Rocks D Buggy, Buggy D Clown, it's going to happen. Oda showing you all the signs. And then the icing on the cake, 
when Shanks meets up with Whitebeard, Whitebeard goes out of his way to ask about Buggy. Whitebeard, yes, they had rivalry as children, but there has to be some kind of deeper reason. Whitebeard, why are you asking Shanks about Buggy? Does Whitebeard know that Buggy's connected to Zebek? Who knows, but if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more videos like this. If you're interested in an insane theory when it comes to Blackbeard having the Ziha Ziha no Mi, being a three-headed demon, and all sorts of crazy stuff, check out the video to my side. But I appreciate you guys watching. It's a Demon King, and I'm out.